everyone. Welcome back to Cats Creations. Um, we're trying a new camera setup, so um, we're going to try this and see how this works. And if it gives us the results that we want, then obviously we will make it a more permanent setup. So there'll be some moments where I might move the camera so that you can see what we're working on. And then obviously so that you can see the door behind me, we're in the shop. So we're gonna try this today um, and see how it functions. And then if it goes good, we can order all the stuff we need to to make it a permanent fix. So um, I thought I'd go live today. You guys haven't seen me since last year. And so welcome to Cast Creations if you're a first timer. I'd like to welcome you to my shop. We relocated from California to Washington, so we're currently living in Washington. Thankfully, no rain today. Um, we're out in our shop. Um, so if you're new, come in, say hi. We'd like to welcome you. And um, I'm hoping you're gonna love this tutorial. For St. Patrick's Day, I've done some St. Patrick's Day like traditional designs, but I like to do what's called like an Irish Irish blessings or an Irish welcome wreath. So um, today we're um, going to be doing an Irish welcome wreath. The reason why I choose to do those over your standard St. Patrick's Day is St. Patrick's Day is, you know, narrowed down to one specific day, March 17th. If you do an Irish welcome or an Irish blessings wreath, those are things that you can keep up throughout the years, especially if that's your um, part of your heritage. So that's what we're working on today. Um, trying to think of anything else. If you like this tutorial and you want to save it so that when you get all of your materials together or you just want something for a reference point, you can go ahead and click the share button down below that's going to share it to your Facebook page where you can reference it and have that handy instead of trying to find it amidst the tons of all of my other um, pages. So let me, um, I'm trying hey to help, everybody. trying to help Steve here <clears throat> momentarily. I probably should have pulled up my Facebook post, but now we're still stuck in some other screen. Kelly said hi, this week sounds fun. Oh, thanks Kelly. Happy New Year all, Elizabeth. Carol, Peggy, Kathy, and Pam, okay. Kelly. And I'm moving it so you should be able to see comments, correct? Yep. Yes? Okay, we're good. So I'm going to go ahead and pan down because that's what most of you want. You want to see, but then you also want to pan down to watch it. So it's going to be a little different. It's going to kind of be like you're sitting across from me. So everything that I'm doing tem temporarily is going to look upside down until I spin it around and then you'll get to see it. The same way that I do. So let me go ahead and pan you down. This is where we're going to do like a slight um, tilt of the camera and pray that it works the way that it's supposed to. So bear with me one second while I take you and I'm going to pivot you down. And I need to make sure that we get this just perfect. And I think that worked, right? Yep. Oh, awesome. Okay, so it's just the way that the camera sets up when it's when it's focused on you front facing is one direction. And then when you need it to do a horizontal look from panning down below, it's a little bit different. So you have yeah. to make these slight adjustments. We'll have to get mount. Yeah, so um, I'm going to show you how we're going to wire together the 14 inch Dollar Tree frame, first of all. So I chose to do... Um, light green and dark green for my color combination. So I'm just gonna, I forgot to put this one on now that I was looking at it. So I have done the first five sections for you. We're gonna do the last section together. I'm just going to take a pipe cleaner in between using um, my weld marks to determine my sections. I'm gonna take this, slide this right in between and then we're going to give it a twist. The reason why I wire together two is it creates stability for your pipe cleaners. Then I'm going to grab a dark green and I'm going to use this weld mark in my center to find a midway point here. Just like this. And I'm going to give you the camera so you can play with um, zooming in and zooming out as you need to. 
So I've done one here and now I'm going to do another one on the opposite side. This way it'll give us three pipe cleaners in each section. Six on the inside right here, what I call the inside six. And then we have 12 to the outside. That leaves you for a grand total of 18. All right, we're all set. Any questions you guys have? Hi, Gail. Um, any questions you guys have on pipe cleaner placement on a 14 inch Dollar Tree wreath frame? I do have a video on YouTube that walks you to how to do the entire thing from scratch. But um, when we do our lives, I generally just take the opportunity to stop and just do one section because nobody's got that much time. Okay, the next thing we're going to do is we're going to use what's called a wide foil metallic green deco mesh. What I'm talking about wide foil is you have a very wide piece of metallic foil. This is like my preferred type of deco mesh of choice to use on most of my designs. I will always opt for wide foil over just regular metallic or even heavy foil, which is like you see a lot more foil than um, you do now. It's one out of every four rows that has that metallic foil through it. And these are gonna be cut to 20 inch pieces using a wood burning tool. So if you've never used a wood burning tool, it is hugely life changing. Um, it will reduce the amount of fraying you have by about, I, would, I don't wanna say 100%. Probably 80, 90%. Yeah, I would go as far as to say like 95%. So we're just going to pretend we have an imaginary line going right up here in the middle. And what you're going to do is you're going to pull that deco mesh towards you. And you're kind of gathering it in little pleated sections. It doesn't have to be perfect. And then you're making what's called a little bow tie, or this is what we call the ruffle. It's the easiest method when it comes to making a deco mesh wreath. Now you have a finished edge here we're gonna put that finished edge towards the inside of our wreath frame. Rita, absolutely, you can share this. This is in the public group. Absolutely, share <clears throat> away. So we are going to give it a couple twists. I prefer to do like an even number of four or five. And then we're gonna snip that off with our wire cutters here. And then I take this little piece right here and push it back towards the center. So that is our center piece. Then we're gonna take another piece. And what I like to do is I always start in the center. I don't know why that started, but it's just preferred to start in the center. And then I take the very next pipe cleaner that I come to and I'll lay the deco mesh in exactly the same way. Finished edges towards the middle. And it's been a while since I made one. Gotta get back into that. So here we go. Same little ruffle method, going right over the top of the other one. Grabbing my pipe cleaners, give it a couple twists. I'm gonna leave these balls on this one because I might wanna come back in and add some fun embellishments towards the end. So you have that there. I like to place this directly over the one on the inside. Make sure that the one on the inside is completely fluffed so that it creates a seamless, like you don't see gaps in between. Now we're just gonna keep going all the way around. Right now I'm actually going into the next section. So if we remember there's three in each section, we're doing the outer left of that section right now. So I'd like to take this and make sure it's completely open, but then take the top piece and the bottom piece and then put your pipe cleaner right in the middle so that it's gonna kind of overlap or lay right on top of the other one. Couple twists there. And these are cut to 20 inches. Yes. And then this way, that helps cover the gap here. So if you think about it this way, your middle one creates a center section that covers up the gap that would happen between these two. However, when you go between these two here, there's no middle section. So by making sure that this one lays kind of over the top of this one, when you place this one, they kind of overlap each other. And then that kind of helps create a more balanced look for your ruffle design. 
So we're gonna go through, and put these on pretty quick. I always find it's easier to pull them towards you than walk your hands up. So we've got our middle section. If your pipe cleaners get in the way, just push them aside. We're gonna give these ones a couple extra twists because remember we're back in the center. So we're gonna remove this one, tuck this one back inside. Because this is the center, we wanna make sure that it is completely open on both ends so that when we come in with our outside pieces, our outsides overlap that inside piece. Yeah. And I always move my pipe cleaners to the left. Okay, now we're back to our center one here. So it's always nice to take an opportunity and make sure that your ruffles are laying smooth. Now remember, the way that I'm laying out my ruffles, the way I do my 14 inch Dollar Tree wreath frame, putting pipe cleaners on, this is just my preferred method. You could um, change it up, do something totally different. There's nothing set in stone that says this is the way that you need to do it. Okay, again, making sure that this ruffle covers our center. And then now, because we have those pieces coming together right here, we want to make sure our top ruffle covers that section. The bottom half of the ruffle covers so that we have this ready to go and we've created and covered the gap. This is where I wish I could just snap my fingers and uh, it's just instantly done. Take your time. Like I said, this is the easiest way. If you've never done a deco mesh wreath before, this is the easiest way to create one or to create a deco mesh wreath. How many of you actually put a St. Patrick's Day wreath on your front door? That'd be a great question to ask. I know quite a few of my family members celebrate St. Patrick's Day. Mm -hmm. Steve loves St. Patrick's Day. Corned beef and cabbage. Mm -hmm. It's his all-time favorite reason for looking forward to St. Patrick's Day. He loves the food. Middle name is Patrick. And it's a lovely deco mesh, very pretty green. That's the emerald green. Yes, this is an emerald green wide foil deco mesh. You can get this deco mesh on Craft Outlet. That's where I purchased it from. You can probably also find it on the Wreath Shop, Trendy Tree, Deco Exchange. Next seasonal decor. Oh Lord, there's it's about a half half split. Some do and some don't. Uh, celebrate St. Patrick's Day. St. Patrick's Day is pretty wreath on the day. Gotcha. I like to, just because I think it it's a nice way as a wreath maker. I think we have to. I think it it should be part of a unwritten code of wreath makers. So you got to have a wreath on your front door. <laughs> How many of you don't currently have a wreath on your front door right now? Give me a thumbs up if you have one on your front door. Like hit the like button. That'll be an easy way so I can see them. Um. Yeah, and that's can we find your videos on YouTube. Yes, yes, you can. If you just go to Cat's Creations and more, or Cat's Creations Race, you can find my YouTube channel. And yeah, Steve will go ahead and put the link there for you so you can find them. If you're up to binge watching, I think there's over, oh, I want to say 300 and coming up to 70 videos on YouTube. So 
so I get a lot of people who binge watch. Okay, we've got this one down. Make sure that our outside piece goes over our inside piece so that everything lays really nicely. Makes it easier for when you come back in and add your sign, add your embellishments. If you guys are joining me um, right now, um, this will automatically go to replay as soon as we finish. So you can catch the very beginning to see how we lead everything out. But right now we're doing 10 inch deco mesh cut to 20 inch pieces for ruffles on a 14 inch Dollar Tree wreath frame. And now I'm just making sure my inside pieces are laying where they need to. Oh, there you go. So Steve was nice enough to go ahead and post my YouTube link. So here's our outside to the next. Gail okay, said shocker, but I do. <laughs> shocker. She has a wreath on her front door. <sighs> I guess I should, the real question should be, what kind of wreath do you have on your front door? Is it a Halloween wreath? Is it a fall wreath? Is it a Christmas wreath? Is it a Christmas wreath still? I changed mine. We, um, we put a winter wreath on our front door. You've got the reindeer great by the yeah, I have a reindeer on my front door right now, or a deer. Okay. Rita says she has Christmas wreath. Dara says she still has a Christmas wreath. Okay. Which is fine. Yeah, because sometimes our Christmas wreaths mm. dual, do dual duty, mm -hmm. you know? The sometimes. She has a winter one. Okay. But sometimes our Christmas wreaths are like Christmas and winter. And there's a snowman. See, that can go for Christmas and winter. Okay. We have, after this piece, four more, and we'll be done with our base method. That's interesting. Guadalupe says, hi, Kat. I would like your opinion on this. Okay. A couple months ago, she went into Joanne Fabrics and a customer voiced her opinion about wreaths only belonging in the cemetery. Well, that's not true. <laughs> okay. She, she wanted an opinion. Obviously. <clears throat> this particular person felt only wreaths should be placed on cemetery? In, in the cemetery. In the cemetery. Um, That would be interesting. I'm going to have to research that. I'm going to have to find out where the origins of wreaths came from. I don't think that they started by being placed on um, gravestones. I think they were always placed on a front door. And then that just evolved into, at Christmas time, they probably took them and placed them on the gravestone, especially like um, for Veterans Day, Memorial Day, things like that, more Memorial Day. Um, you know, we have the placings of the wreaths on um the gravestones of the soldiers in Arlington Memorial. Right. But I, I that's what they did. They made fresh evergreen wreaths to put on their front door. Yes. But I will do that. That is a fun fact to research. I would just think that um, the the novelty of the idea probably came from decorating your home for Christmas, and since that is the first place people enter your home, they probably extended their holiday decorations to their front door first. Chucky Wizard, could you please show me again how to put the mush to cover, which I think you just did, you've been doing it. Yeah, so mm -hmm. I'll show you. And so, you one more. yeah, no, I have two. two more. So the center one acts as a cover, not only to increase you know what happens here on the inside but it acts as a a cover between your two outside pieces 
So in each section you have one here and two here. The one here acts as a, like, it for sure covers um, the, whatever gap might happen between um, the center, between either right and left side of your sections. When we move into this, the other section, like we're getting to do here shortly, like right now I've got to finish this one in between my third. So I have one here. I just added my center. I'm going to come in and we're going to go ahead and ruffle our piece. This must have been probably the one from the inside inside. Uh, Luann, there's always 18 pieces on this Dollar Tree wreath form. 12 pieces on the outside, 6 pieces on the inside for a total of 18 pieces. Yes. And they're each cut to 20 inches. So here we go. We're laying this back. See how I'm taking my piece and making sure my ends are covering. They go to the next door. This way I can see both pipe cleaners to my outside. I can also see the one to the inside. I'm just going to move them to the left. And then here's my last piece. So this is the one that's starting the next section. So I find that if you take the end of the piece before and lay it on the bottom, take the piece here on the edge, lay it on the top so that your pipe cleaner is between the two, then when we lay that, it'll help create that coverage between the sections on your outer pieces. And then we always lay our mesh. We're ruffling against the curl, but we're adding the finished ends towards our inside, just like this. And then you'll just take a moment and just make sure that you spread those out. Make sure your pipe cleaners are readily available. So that way when you're ready to come in and start adding in your ribbon, you already have all your pipe cleaners handy. So they're always, they're right there. So now we're gonna add our ribbon, which is, we're gonna go two and a half inch. I have these done in two different sections. So the two and a half inch pieces are cut to 14 inches. The inch and a half pieces are cut to 19 inches. These are going to be done in half bows. These are done in what's called a ribbon tail. Then I have the shamrocks on white in the two and a half inch. And then we're just going to pop a solid emerald glitter green on top of that as a nice complement. So what we do is they're already pre-cut, so the dovetails are already in them. We're going to go straight up from the top. I just fold them so I can find where's the middle point, and then I'm going to gather right between those. Place that right inside my pipe cleaner. I'm gonna give it one twist. I'm gonna kind of fan those out like rays of a sun. And then I'm gonna take my 19 inch piece, I'm gonna fold it in half so that the ends are together and I'm going to come up about two inches from the top. I'm going to gather inside so I have a little loop. The little loop is going to sit right inside this end here. We're going to give it a couple twists. I'm going to go ahead and open this up. I have to right side my ribbon. So I'm just going to undo that, flip it over. I like to position them so that you can see both the ribbons um, equally, I guess, as equal as it can be. And these pieces here, I'm going to probably take and add some scatters and fillers to. Now these I've gotten from Hobby Lobby, um, Dollar Tree over the years. Um, and I just keep them in little, uh, what do you call them? Containers. Containers, yeah, little rectangle shaped containers. I'm gonna take these down to about an inch and a half. They're just little foam balls. 
I'm gonna put a dark green on one end. Actually, I have gold too, so maybe we'll alternate. Let's do green and gold here. Just like that, so we can have a little embellishment, a little bit of gold to this. Um, because on our sign, we had a horseshoe for good luck. And then now, for the next one, we're going to take the alternating pair, go straight up the center, add it right in here. Quick twist of the ties. Fan that one out. We'll add our green here. Tuck that in. Do the exact same thing. Give it a couple twists. We're technically done with that section. I don't need to open it back up. Well, that's a really good idea. I haven't seen that before. <clears throat> Kat's been doing that for a while. <clears throat> There are so many different ways you can embellish a wreath. Mm -hmm. And this one is just, it works really well for me. And then what I'll do when I'm finished with the wreath is I'll go back in and um, see there's these lime green ones in here too that come out at Hobby Lobby during fall. So I'm gonna take that um, green and then I'll also add a white so that we're having four different colors on there so we have a white a lime green a little bit of difference right there for that so I will go back and just keep alternating and adding the colors of the styrofoam balls now you can find those at Dollar Tree they might still have them left over from Christmas um, you might find the gold and black and white maybe left over from New Year's. Um, I know Hobby Lobby's probably, I don't even know, what is the sale percentage at Hobby Lobby right now? Is it 80 or 90% off? If so, now's a really great time to go score on all the colors that Hobby Lobby carried during Christmas. They had metallics, they had um, like a rainbow metallic for people who were really into the vintage colors. Um, I'm just trying to decide what color I want on top of which, because as you get the two that are closest together, you almost... Um, You have to pick. They're too close in proximity to each other. Here's another one. So sometimes you have to pick, you know, do you want the green clovers on top or whatever. Okay, these will go pretty quick. So for the measurements again on these the two and a half inch ribbons um, and all of them came mm. from craft outlet with the exception of the gr solid green with the glitter um, that came from shinoda but i believe you can still find you know green glittered ribbon at craft outlet yes and valentine's day is already 40 percent off oh <clears throat> wow <sighs> But that's, I think that's pretty standard because I think they always start right at 40% because if we're thinking about it, it's really only five weeks away, mm -hmm. I think. I know a lot of people were really scoring big on their Christmas. Our light green and our white is kind of the combo we had going there. Okay, back to these two. 
normally I take my time and just like, let's go all the way around the wreath and do the tails. Then let's go all the way around the wreath and add the half bows. And so what I've been doing lately is I just take one section at a time, finish it, and then move on. This way the people who fast forward the YouTube videos can watch the first two and then fast forward to all the ribbon tails are done. Ready to add the sign and make our bow. It says all Christmas items 90% off in store only. Okay. So in store only 90% off. A lot of you guys in your Hobby Lobbies have a lot of stuff left. Now is a great time to buy anything that is green colored. Like if there's green colored ribbon, green colored mesh, it's perfect oh, for St. Patrick's Day. Um, red for Valentine's Day. Red white will be for uh, 4th of July, Memorial Day. So don't get stuck on just, um, you know, one particular. Um, like, well, they didn't have any, you know, good Christmas colors. Think beyond that Christmas color. I have another container that has gold in it. just so we can stay consistent. As you can tell, I have quite a few containers. I have ones that are just red, white, and blue, ones that are just Christmas colored, one that are pastels. Steve is trying to add them all to the smaller containers for me. Oh, uh, yes, it's just talked up on evergreen bases. Yes, I heard. People are getting like evergreen base, like the mm -hmm. 18 or 24 inch bases for like $1.89 by the time they take that 90% off, yeah, that's awesome. which is amazing. You want to do that because remember, you can use evergreen bases all throughout the year. You can use them as a deco mesh base. And you don't have to worry about putting pipe cleaners on. You just add your deco mesh right to your evergreen. I need to get up to uh, our local Hobby Lobby. I haven't been yet. So sad. Okay, let me find my. Did I do the right one? Um. Yes, this in white. I have to do anyway. Just felt like I wasn't there for the moment. Great. Yeah, we can um, all, we're only using them probably like six, six lime green, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah, six lime green, six dark green, six gold, six white. We're talking the little scatters and fillers. That's really all you need. But it makes for a nice little way to uh, embellish the end of your pipe cleaners. Or you can cut them off, you can curl them. You'll see me do quite a few different things with them. Right now I'm just cutting them down to about an inch and a half, two inches. <clears throat> yeah, Gail said that uh, probably all they had evergreen bases, three different prices for 24 inch ones. Wow. So, she said some are split for five dollars and some are that for three fifty. That's amazing. So I have nothing to do tomorrow. What are we getting up to? I think eleven dollars we're doing, right? Well they were eleven what was the going price this year, Gail? It was eleven were they eleven ninety nine? You didn't add any gold to the other one. Now you are. Oh, I'm adding them to this one. If you want to add them to that one. They go with the lime green color. He's just adding them to the red, white, and green for Christmas. Again, snap. Wish it was done. But in reality, 
once we finish these, all we have to do is make the bow, um, put the bow on, add our sign, add a couple um, fun embellishments that I feel um, would definitely make this a statement piece. Here's something I did not do. I did not even list this yet. Yeah. I think because we weren't sure if we are going to go live. We are like, uh, uh, let's try the... Mama said she saw $16 before Christmas. Okay. That's pretty high. Yeah. That is really high. Yeah, it's said $11.99, $17.99, and $21.99, I think. $11.99? Ugh. I think that's for the 12-inch. Or sorry, not 12 but the 24 I don't know. That seems so high right now. That's why when you can get them, you know, now, yeah. get them now. Because you might, I mean, if you can order, well, you can't order them online. But if you can pick up like 10 of them, you might be set for like the whole year as far as forms. I mean, odds are you're probably not going to make 10 evergreens for Christmas, but you can use those throughout the year everywhere else. And I'm going to show you how you can use those evergreen bases just using deco mesh. We're getting there. We only have three more to do after this. They're so... It's always getting the last. And I'm making sure all my bows are, the little loops are nice and crisp. They look like arms that need hands. So we're adding the hands to them. So here's our green. And then our gold. And if you notice, habits, good habits are important to have, like knowing your process and how you place things. Like I'm always stopping, make sure I fold my um, ribbon tails. Why? Because I want them to be the same length on both sides. So folding them in half ensures that I do that. Or else if you got two 24 inch <clears throat> which were originally fifteen ninety nine mm -hmm. for five dollars. That's still right really great. Christmas. So that was probably when they were like seventy percent off, yeah. probably. Even getting garlands. Here's the thing we don't think about those nine foot garlands. You can break those down into three foot um, pieces to make uh, mailbox swags, to make lantern swags. Um, uh, you can use them as centerpieces, table runners, uh, just regular Christmas door swags. We forget. We're like, oh darn it, I wish I would have remembered that to pick those up for that reason. Oops, I almost grabbed a red one. That would have not looked really good on our St. Patrick's Day wreath. Okay, making sure. Yep, it's gonna be time to take my mailbox swag off my mailbox. That thing has sat in heavy wind, rain, snow, ice, that thing has gone through the gamut, and uh, I'll take pictures of it tomorrow. It looks just as good as the day I put it on there. And that's with no UV protectant spray, no Scotch Guard, no nothing. It was create it just like this, slap it on my mailbox, and call it done. So I'll make sure that I post pictures of that tomorrow. I haven't even had to go out and fluff the bows. 
the bows have stayed in their nice upright positions. Like all the outside home decor we put up this year looked amazing. We didn't have to go out and refluff anything. It stood up to the elements perfectly. So I keep smashing. Okay. Last one. This would also this would make a really super cute uh, centerpiece too. If you were to take the sign off, like it doesn't have a sign on it now, but if you were to put a really nice, beautiful hurricane lamp in the center and a flameless candle or even a um, non-flameless candle, but as long as you use a hurricane lamp just to protect the deck mesh. Yes, we'll go tomorrow. You may never know they may have some. I know. There was quite a few people who yeah. said that their Hobby Lobbies were stocked really well and they still had a lot of stuff left. At least if the sound is gone, obviously you won't be able to hear me, but if the sound is gone, just log out and come back in. Okay, last piece. I'm trying to find. Every time I go to grab one of my white ones, they just kind of sink to the bottom. Okay, there we are. These are all done. I'll have Steve put those away for me. But see, this is what I'm saying, is this would make for a really nice... Um, centerpiece. If you add a hurricane lamp to it, it looks gorgeous. You could add gold coins to it, little pots of gold, um, fresh florals. You can kind of tuck these in all over the place. Can you zoom out a bit? Uh oh, it's getting there. There we go. Um, so now we're going to go ahead and put a bow on this. So I'm going to use my bow dabra. I promise you we will start using other different types of bow makers. If you guys have seen, I've done a bow making class. So we've done them with Easy Bow Maker, Bodabra, Crowbow. I just prefer this one because it does so much more than just make bows. Um, so I'm trying to decide on my color combinations for my ribbons right now. I kind of like this one being on the outside edge. We're also going to introduce a couple others like this and then the sheer with the um, shamrocks on it. So I kind of like that layout. I think that's what I'm going to go with. So we're going to start with our two and a half inch and do we have it? I don't see it. I'll have to look for it. The bow recipe thing. I don't see it under here. Mm. I will have to look for that. I don't have it handy. So we're going to start with two and a half inch ribbon. We're going to dovetail our ends, which means bring your wired edges together. You have to decide how far up on your ribbon do you want to start on the folded end. Your destination point will always be the end of your wired edge. So right here for me, because I like these pretty deep Vs, just like that, is how you get that crisp V. We're going to go 10 inches in. I'm going to gather right side facing up. I'm going to twist it, place that inside the Bodabra. I'm going to measure out five and a half inch loops which is just take my bow dabber, bring that line back to where it lines up with your 10, stretch this out, and then pull it back until you get five and a half inches. Once you have that, do the same thing on the other side. You'll get pretty good to where you can almost tell where that's at. But like any good recipe, I don't want to just eyeball it. I want it to look good. So I'm just going to take my time, measure, and go back to the habits I've started since the beginning. This one's done. All the ribbon, like I said, came from Craft Outlet, except for this one, which is from Shinoda. 
Um, I don't know if they still have them available, but when I bought them a couple years ago, that's where they came from. Doing the same thing here, we're going to go nine and a half inches. So at nine and a half, I'm gathering, twisting, place it right on the inside. And now we're going to measure five inches for our bow length. Stretch this out. Are you fraying? Are you? I'm okay. Actually, feels good on my shoulder. It's like having a heat pack on there. Okay, so we're stretching this one out nine and a half inches. Do your dovetail. Trying to find. Here it is. Use pins to secure my ribbon, but sometimes they roll off the table. This inch and a half is going to be cut to nine inch tail and then we're going to do a four and a half inch loop same way up and over kind of gauge where you think it should be put it on your measuring line stretch it out and then pull it back until you got it to the right length And over. <clears throat> Pull it back. Back out to nine inches. Dovetail. And I'm kind of cleaning as I'm going. So that way, when you're done, um, you just kind Contains all of my St. Patrick's Day embellishments, all of my St. Patrick's Day signs. It has it's a clear tub or tote with a lid. That way I can see what's on the inside without having to open everything. Yeah, that's a good tip for all the crafters. Yeah. Yes, clear tubs, <clears throat> and then you can label them. Like I have it labeled St. Patrick's Day, so. Um, if I know that I need to do an Irish blessing wreath, well, I'm going to go look in the tub that has the St. Patrick's Day in it. So the next one is still going to be four and a half inch. And so what I've done is I know that they're both exactly four and a half inches, so I can put my fingers in both and then make a slight adjustment on the top one so that I don't have to stop and put it back on the 10 inch line. I'm just going to place that there, but I do in order to make sure that my tails are eight and a half inches. Okay, that one's done. See, I keep doing that thing where I'm like, where did my pin go? Find that one momentarily. We're going to add the sheer, which is just little glittered shamrocks on it. This is going to be eight inches. With a four inch loop. Right at the four inch line. Did you move it? Oh, felt like it got moved closer because I was like, wow, that is getting way hot. Feels like the sun. No, it's fine. I just pushed it back out a further. Eight inches. Dovetail. Pick these 
up. Do you want to put a pin in that one, Steve? That one's just going to go back on the shelf since it's just solid green. Stuff that I know is like themed for a specific holiday, like heart ribbon. Those would go in like Valentine's Day bins. These will all go in St. Patrick Day bin. Last one is going to be seven and a half inches. I need a twist. This loop size is three and a half inches. It's about as small as far as the loop that I will go. Anything else just feels like it's way too small. Go up and over. Do the same here. Making sure it's three and a half. And then back out to seven and a half inches. Dovetail again. And this goes in that tub. Okay. We're going to grab this one. With a pipe cleaner. You can use zip ties. You can use floral wires. You can use the Bodabra wire. I just find that as I got older, um, I'm losing hand strength. So using a pipe cleaner and holding it right at the bottom of my ribbon stack and then just moving my stack and twist the stack but hold the ribbon just makes it so much easier. Okay, so the fluff board is currently out of commission, getting repaired. Trying to see if we can put it back together again. So I have taken the advice I've told all of you, which is we should have put this on the other side because this side is more finished, weird, than this. This is more unfinished. So I'm gonna have Steve move that around when we're done. 24 by 24 inch piece of pre-cut lumber, just a two in, an inch and a half to two inch little C hook that screws in. Um, you can make your own fluff board. You can buy this pre-cut so you don't have to have anyone cut it for you. So I'm just going to take, I prefer to do it this no, way. pre-cut, two foot by two foot. Yeah. So I'm gonna just stretch that right over the top. And then we're gonna start from the bottom. This is our top, this is our bottom, but I'm gonna start from the very bottom ribbon and I'm gonna separate the tail from its loop. Just like that, tail goes to the left, loop goes to the right. Go to the other side of your stack and go opposite. So this time the loop goes to the left, tail goes to the right, so they're directly opposite of each other. Go to the next ribbon and we're gonna go opposite. So this time we're taking our tail off to the right, loop off to the left. Okay, go back to the other side. So we have tail and then our loop. And what it's doing is it's alternating the tails, alternating the loops each time you bring one down. Now we're back here to, um, whatchamacallit, um, to the inch and a half. So rather than do, you know, um, white with green and then green with green. I'm going to break that up. So whatever I do on the top, meaning this bundle of ribbon here, I want to do the opposite to this part here. So here's my tail and here's my loop right on top of the green. And now I'm going to split the green. Here's my loop. Here's my tail. Down at the bottom, I'm going to grab the opposites. And then here we are at the top. You can decide whatever you want to do. As a bow maker, you can make whatever decision you want. I'm just going to keep going back and forth. And then from here, here's I'm following the green. Whatever I do on the top, meaning here, you do the opposite to the bottom. Okay. Everything is completely flat. I have not fluffed anything. From here, you're going to grab your top two loops. So it's the sheer and this green. You're just gonna put your fingers on the inside 
and rotate them out. Take the fold out of them. Just round them nice and pretty. Do the same thing here. Nice and pretty. And then you're gonna grab the next two and you're gonna decide what do you wanna see come in between these. I kind of like the green, so I'm going to move my green so that it falls in between over here. Here's my green. Here's my green and white. And just move them around so they kind of fall in line with where you want everything to go. Just like that. Okay. Then don't forget the bottom ones. Same thing applies. Wherever you want those colors to fall, make sure you really get in there and give yourself a good lift on the two and a half inch ribbon. Just like that. Here's my two and a half. And then just move things around to till it, it suits you as a designer. For here on your tails, just run them between your fingers and you'll put those nice little arcs back in them. Those can wind up wherever you want them to be too. It's a little harder to get the two and a half inch on the bottom, but this way it'll follow the wreath around any way you'd like. And that's our bow. I take it off the opposite same way or the opposite way I put it on. Take this. Move that. Yep, that'll give me a splinter. <clears throat> so that's going to need to get lacquered nicely. So we have a nice smooth <clears throat> finish. You all sand again. Yes. Same. So highly recommend sand down your boards. Um, sand them down good. And if you want to paint them, paint them. You can even um, take rulers and um, put your ruler markings on it. You can paint them on. You can uh, put a piece of, uh, what do you call it? Like a tape measure, like a paper tape measure down and then lacquer over that. And then that way you have measurements on your fluff board. A ton of different things you can do. Um, our sign. So I'm going to flip this so you guys can read this. Right. Yeah, angle it more if you see the words. Angle it this way. Oh, that's right. Yeah. There it goes. So angle it down. So you have to wait for it to come up. Yeah. Kind of like that. <laughs> so it just says Irish welcome, mm -hmm. wishing you a pot of gold and all the joy your heart can hold. So this sign is from Three Birds Nest. my beadsmith metal hole punch and we are going to add holes to the side of my sign just like that and just like this i like it because it's got a nice little rusted horseshoe on it we're going to take 22 gauge floral wire and i'm going to peel off probably about 18 inches there's one piece. You don't need a ton. There's two. You can pick that up at Michael's and Joann's. Same thing with the Beadsmith um, metal hole punch pliers. You can get them at Joann's Hobby Lobby Michael's in the jewelry section. They're just jewelry hole punches. You need them in 1.5 millimeter. I wouldn't suggest going any bigger than inch and a half. So we're going to twist and build this from the back, which simply means when I put my wire in to the hole that I've punched, I'm going to make sure that it's even on both sides. And then I'm building my twist right over the hole. 
This way it sits flat on my wreath and it doesn't spin like a spinner. Okay, and I don't have to worry about adhesive ties coming loose or staples coming undone. Holes in a metal sign is the perfect way to attach the sign. So we are going to bring our wreath back over here. I am trying to decide which way I want it to go. I have a couple options. So we can go put the sign in the center. We can put our bow on top. We can kind of put our sign off to the side. We can put our bow right here. We can do the opposite. Kind of put it on an angle here. Kind of like that a little bit better. And just knowing that I can angle. I think I like it like that is kind of how I'm going to go. So I'm going to put it in the upper left hand corner. So remember those pipe cleaners we cut off in the center section? I'm going to go ahead and find one of those. You're going to go ahead and locate one. And put your sign right over the top of your pipe cleaners because you know that that is secured down to your frame. And I'm going to push but not overly tight because I don't want it sucked down to the middle. Couple twists just in case we have to move it. Find the pipe cleaner on the opposite side. We're going to go ahead and add this. My, on this one, I made the wire just a tad too long. So again, push it down to about the level you want it to go. Secure it. And then what I like to do is feather my sign. So right now, all we see is a rectangle. If we take the edges of our deco mesh that we put in, I would kind of pull those up and around our sign. It kind of feathers the edge so it's not so defined for us. Just like that. We'll do the same over here. Since we're going to place our bow here, I want to make sure that nothing is going to stand in the way of my ribbon laying flat. So I'm just going to take these and tuck these underneath. This is probably still going to get in the way right in here, but we can feather this edge. And now I'm going to take my bow and because I have those two, two and a half inch pieces, I'm going to use those as like an L shaped frame. Lay those right over the top. Once I find my pipe cleaner, And we are just going to feed that down through the mesh to our frame and secure it to one of the wires. There we go. I'm going to take it and push it from here so I don't compress my bow and unfluff it. I just need to push it down so I know how tight to pull on the other side. And then just go ahead and refluff everything. It is a really pretty and then it's a beautiful wreath. Thank you. And so we're going to add a few things around because this is just a lot of green. So I want to break up some of that green that's happening right there. So let me flip it this way so you guys can see. Can you see it on yours? Yeah. Okay. So that's kind of what it looks like on your end. Oop, and now I can see. That looks good. Lay it down, it looks perfect. So, right. Yeah. So that's what it looks like with our sign. So we're going to add some embellishments in here to break this up. Now we can, you know, bring more of our ruffles back front and center. But taking clues for my sign, we have a four leaf clover here. And then Michael's sells these little plastic four leaf clover bushes. So we're going to take in 
trim a couple of these off. Yeah, that's a nice combination, very pretty wreath. Linus is very pretty. <clears throat> Linus is a little from snowy Minnesota. I bet it's gonna be cold as well. Cold and snowy, right? So these are two-tone. So I'm just going to be, I'm placing them to see if I like their position before I make them permanent. But we're gonna break up some of this right around here. And I'm just kind of tucking them in. So we have some shamrocks. Christine said, first time watching, this is beautiful. Welcome to Christine, where are you from? What city and state? Welcome Christine, thanks for stopping by and joining us. So. Chad also has a YouTube page that's pinned down below. Um, here we go. Let's add one more. Looking for something with just a little touch of something different right in here. Like maybe we'll put the lighter color to where it's predominantly more like that. I think I want just a little bit more here, which means that I'll come back in and add two of the pick pieces so we have a little bit more down in here. But I kind of like that look. It breaks up the look of all that green. So I have my glue gun on. The little picks have those little balls on the end. My glue gun is set to high. So I am going and laying in a pretty thick bead of glue. And that's going to attach to the deco mesh that is all the way around that sign. So that's why it's important to do top and bottom. We're going to slide that right in and right to where our four leaf clovers stop. And this is a perfect way to break up a lot of, you know, um, field of green on your deco mesh that you might not want. Okay. Check that piece in. We've already done these. We'll add these two. We'll do the far away piece first and then the more up close piece. So this one's more far. Let's get that one to lay. And more up close. Right down in here. And just kind of play where wherever you want them to look. So we've added a nice little touch of clover all the way around and I've done them in bunches of odds. So I have one, two, three, four, five. Odds have a tendency of drawing your eye towards an object rather than um, evens. Evens are too symmetrical. So people will have a tendency of looking longer trying to figure out what is it that's drawing their attention without realizing it's the fact that there's a little bit of an odd thing happening here. And you're just gluing it right down to the deco mesh. To the deco mesh, right. Um, Dollar Tree has little gold coins that says a four leaf clover for good luck. So it has like a four leaf clover on one side and then the little Irish blessing. You can take these and tuck them in to your design. Oop, that one went a little too far. We'll be recovering that one. You can kind of tuck them in. Let's see if we can get this one to tuck. Like that looks super cute. We'll probably tuck one in here and then we'll probably add one to our four leaf clover. So to tuck them in, same thing. Depends on what you want to see. I want to see the little four leaf clover. So I'm adding my glue. I'm going to take and tuck that right down there. Charlotte said, I love this so much. Thanks, Charlotte. So I know you can get the coins at Dollar Tree. So I'm going to do this here. We're going to tuck that one in as well. So it doesn't slide all the way through. I think this one we're going to actually do face up so you can actually read what it says. We'll just kind of tuck this one in. I just want it to stick. I just don't want it to go down. Let's see if it's going to sink. It looks like it's sinking into the oblivion. Mm -hmm. Trying to get it to glue to the four leaf clover. Okay, 
And then let's add one to the center. Let's see, pull the whole thing off and see, like, do I want just one or do I want a couple pieces in the center of my bow? Kind of like that. Let's add, that's a light. Let's add a light and a dark. to our bow. So let's glue those in. Just going to add glue to the bottoms so that when I tuck them into my bow, that's where they'll stay. And she'll turn it around here for you in a second. Yeah, I will. Let's go right in there. I'm not sure. Do I want to put a gold coin in there? Maybe not. I know, I'm doing the same thing too. Let's put another baby clover inside. There's that three and five thing. So we're gonna do three. Just like so. Okay, all good. Let's flip this around so you can see what it looks like. And then I will flip you up and show it to you what it looks like on the door. Are you zoomed out? Yeah. Okay. It's taking a while. Mm -hmm. It's just taking a while. Okay. Okay. Perfect. Okay, I'm gonna pivot you up. So bear with me one more time. I'm gonna make a slight adjustment. So to the camera. So this is going to throw me. You'll have to tell me where to stop, Steve. You got it. Okay. Right there? Yep. What do you see? Okay, perfect. Um, so we're going to take this wreath, which goes right on our prop door, which is great for pictures. Right now, when it's still dark outside, you're going to make sure that all of your ribbon tails are nice and crisp right because people buy off of photos when you're an online shopper so you want to make sure that everything looks nice and pristine make sure you remove your glue threads make sure you can see all those pretty ribbons and all the embellishments you did Jeans are really pretty. Love it. Lance are gorgeous. Lance are pretty. Awesome. You can zoom in so we don't have to see the roll-up garage door back there. Um, and I think there you guys go. We have successfully mastered it. Um, here is our Irish welcome. This will go up on my website. I always put them on the website first. I always price them better on the website than obviously on Etsy because um, I have more control over their pricing than through Etsy. So if you guys are interested in this, this will be up in a little while once I take photos. What I'd like to also let you guys know that is available is we started the back to basics classes today. Um, this is the last year that I'm doing a business academy and a design academy bundled. Next year, they're going to be totally separate and they're going to be at their own individual price points. So if you want to join now, you can lock in your price for as long as you remain a, a current member. And no matter what changes that I make in the business side of things, you stay current with what you currently signed up for. So we start our design class next Monday. So if you want to get into like, hey, I'm a brand new wreath maker. I've always wanted to learn how to make a wreath. I'm going to walk you through everything that you need to know um, a little bit different than what we did tonight. We're going to go slow. We're going to go back to basics. We're going to talk color. We're going to talk theory. We're going to talk uh, what colors go good together. Why do some colors look better than others? How do I match my ribbon? How do I do all that stuff? We start at the basics and then we slowly build upon the things that we learn. That generally takes about three to four months to get those classes under your belt to where you feel comfortable. This way you're not rushing out to Hobby Lobby or 
Joanne's, Walmart, whatever, and buying a ton of supplies and then realizing later you could have saved money, could have waited, you could have gotten better quality items for a lot less and had them, um, you know, obviously better quality. So Steve pinned the link at the bottom. It's craftscreationsandmore.com. I'd love to have you guys join us. We meet every Monday. Let me think about that. Monday at 4 Pacific and every Tuesday at 10 a.m. Pacific. We're doing a nighttime class and a um, morning class. Replays are always available and you can always look at anything that you have that I've made in the public or private group all the way back to 2018. So you have access to my total library. So I hope you guys will join. Um, thank you guys for showing up tonight and supporting me. And hopefully, if fingers crossed, we get our um, mount done fairly soon. I'll see you either Wednesday or Thursday. And uh, we'll talk to you then. Bye for now, everyone.